good morning thank you so much for joining us here at earth and sky and each of you joining us online we really appreciate each and every one of you and thank you for the likes the shares the love and the feedback that you give to us this morning we're going to be talking about the december moon the cold moon of December. Every moon has different names. A couple years ago we got in depth each month about the different moons and we've been starting to return back to the, that as we pass the wheel across Samhain once again. And uh, so this being December is often known as the cold moon which makes a lot of sense. A lot of the native tribes would each have different names for the moons and then those have been translated basically. And some of the other moons names for this moon would be the drift clearing moon. I suppose you're in a pretty cold country if in December it's already the drift clearing moon. The other one that I like that I actually hadn't heard before is the frost exploding trees moon or the moon of the popping trees which makes sense if you think about it. If you've walked through a forest at night in the winter and the snow is really thick in the air and heavy on the branches, you may hear some of those branches that are popping as the weight of the snow pills a bit on them and the moonlight lights your path. It's a really, truly beautiful and magical time to get out and to explore a bit. Make sure that you're staying safe if you are exploring at night in the woods, of course. But um, the, it makes sense why they would have those names for these moons. One of the other names for this moon, I'm going to get to actually in just a moment before I do, I wanted to mention that this moon is in Gemini and it's going to be heading directly into a retrograde Mars planet, which means that you may notice around you during this time a bit more anger in the air, a bit more energy, a bit more zest. So it's a good idea to watch yourself, to watch and be aware of your own behavior because you never want to be pulled too far by the pull of the moon. Sometimes we notice how much the moon pulls on our own emotions, just as it pulls the tides of the ocean and, and they start to roll in higher and heavier it does that same thing with the watery element of us, which is emotion. So since we're heading into this kind of angry, warring planet of Mars that's in retrograde, which has us looking back at ourselves, meaning you might want to be aware of turning anger in at yourself or turning frustration in on yourself or anxiety in on yourself, and especially where it relates with communication. So your self-talk, as well as your communication with others, others and also transportation. So if you are noticing that you're on the road and you're feeling a little bit more road rage, maybe it's good to take a few breaths and be able to release that. If you are driving, it's good to be aware of that with others as well. We add to that all of the holiday rush that people may be feeling a bit this year as well. And it's really important to try to be the light yourself in each of these situations. We can never control what anyone else ever does around us. But we can control who we are, what we do, what our actions are, what our mindset is at, which helps to plant the seeds for what we're creating in our life. So be aware of those pulls that are going to be going on. And you may start feeling that already as this is airing and for another week or at least a few days after the full moon as those energies tend to heighten a bit. And then also we're going to be going into the sign of Capricorn towards the end of the month, which can be a bit of a darker time, a bit of a more challenging, a harder time as we're coming into the kind of the dark night of the year in a way. This moon is also known as the long night moon. And it's known as that because it is often one of the longest nights. The longest night of the year is coming up when we talk about Yule here in just a week or so. And uh, Yule is where we have the very longest time of darkness. The opposite time of the year would be the summer solstice where we have the longest time of the light. So with the longest night moon, it often hangs low in the horizon for longer than any of the other moons do. So you might choose to go out to look at it as it begins to rise. It will reach its peak this year on December 7th 
at 11.09 p.m. Eastern Time, so it's kind of nice. It's not too late at night, but as soon as that begins to set, go out and take a peek at it and notice how large the moon looks this time of year and how long it seems to set, kind of waving right low on the horizon and then begins to continue to rise over us. And that reminds me, though, of the phrase that the night is darkest before dawn. Because just as we see with this long night moon and it hangs in the horizon in the early evening and then eventually starts to fade away and becomes darkest before the sun begins to rise, sometimes we feel that in our own lives too. Sometimes life can begin to get very, very heavy. And I've seen that a lot with people lately where life has just begun to feel very heavy. I know there have been a lot of losses that a lot of people seem to be experiencing, at least from what I'm hearing with a lot of people and seeing in my own life. And sometimes those things can be a bit challenging as we figure out our own way to navigate through this as well. And one of the things that I was also pondering with this, with the long night or the concept of it's always darkest before dawn, is you may notice certain periods in your life where challenges seem to come. And if you've ever noticed, before you have any kind of a big breakthrough in your life, whether it's a big breakthrough in a relationship or a big breakthrough in business, usually before that breakthrough comes in, there was some kind of a big challenge. And you may have noticed that just before things started to get better, everything kind of erupted in chaos a bit. And that's what we sometimes see with this moon, the challenge that it brings. But it's important to remember if you feel like you're in that phase of challenge in your life right now, that it's really important to recognize that the challenge is here for a reason. And every time there's a big challenge, there's a gift that it brings with it. And not to let yourself get lost in the dark for too long, but to recognize that something is coming from this. The challenge is there to assist you to grow. If we didn't have those dark nights, if we didn't have those big challenges, we'd be pretty much the same coasting through, not learning a whole lot in this life. So when you're feeling those challenges and you feel that pressure or that bit of stress or the, the weight of the long night that's hanging over you for a period of time, know that it's the time to begin searching for that gift. And the way to do that is to look at the challenge that presents itself and see what is it that you're supposed to learn? How are you supposed to grow? How can you expand yourself? How can you expand your vessel and expand your soul so that you'll be ready for whatever that gift is that's on the other side. We're not ready for that gift or that great blessing of light or whatever it is until we break through that challenge because that's how we earn it. That's how we are able to come into the place where we're able to receive that thing that we're working so hard for and know that we earned it, that we then are able to bring it in and then go ahead and start catapulting to the next direction in life and the next challenge that will eventually come with the next phase that comes through. This is the time of year to really begin preparing your vessel, whether you feel like you're in one of those challenging phases right now or not, whether you find that as we move into Capricorn later in this month that you start at that point reaching some challenges or not, this is a time to really focus on preparing your vessel. We've frequently talked about the wheel of the year and how the winter is the time for planning, the spring is the time for planting, the summer is when things begin to grow, the fall is when we harvest, and we're in this midpoint of the cycle right now between the fall and the winter. The winter starts about on December 21st, but we're kind of in between. We've already past the last of the harvest festivals and this is the time to really start thinking about how to prepare your vessel how do you prepare your body your mind your soul your spirit 
for whatever your goals you're about to be setting for yourself. We've been talking about all of the different types of New Year celebrations that start from October and continue through February and how we want to bring in our different goals, how you want to set your mind for what you want to create. But it's important, first of all, in this time period, this very special window of time that we're in right now, to think about how to prepare your vessel. One of the things to do is to take stock of who you are. What did you do this last year? What did you achieve that you had hoped you would achieve? What things did you not achieve that you had hoped? What things do you see that you really maybe want to change about yourself? And what things are you pretty happy with about yourself? Because we can't really fully set the goals that we want to have and set the action plan for the steps that we need to take until we know where we are. Who are you? Where are you on the map that you're about to create for this next year of your life? And we talk Kabbalistically about three different columns. So there's the left column, the right column, and the central column. The left column is the one that would represent aspects of being selfish or greedy or jealous, feeling like things need to be your way because you know what's right, or maybe being arrogant and things like that. That bit of an extra kind of pushing forward kind of an energy. And then the right column would represent those attributes that are a, a bit extreme on the other direction, not having any boundaries, always trying to please others, oversharing beyond what would make sense to truly do, being too accepting of whatever comes your way and not having standards that you require for yourself or from others, but being uh, somebody that just allows anybody to do anything with you. That would be the right column. And we all have certain attributes that will be in each of those columns. And the goal is to come into the central column. The central column where you know when to pull from something, when to share something. You know who you are within yourself and you know that there are other people that are much better at certain things than you and that there are certain aspects of yourself that you really should share with others. That central column is an ability to find balance within yourself and within the world. But it's hard to always stay in that central column. So it's really important to recognize where is the arrogance? Where is the greediness? Where is the inability to understand yourself? Where are all of the attributes that you would use to describe yourself? And so taking stock of that now, as we're in this phase, this timing, or for the next couple of weeks, basically, to really write and make up a list of, you might even look up online, a lot of types of attributes that people would use to define themselves and then circle which ones do you see in yourself. Maybe you find that with family you have certain attributes that come out with friends, other attributes come out. With coworkers, maybe you are even a different way. Sometimes we have certain people that we're very harsh with in life, and other people we're very forgiving with in life. It's really important to recognize where are you in all of these facets, and who do you want to be? What attributes do you feel would be a positive light within yourself? And as you're doing this assessment, it's not about judging yourself. It's not about saying, oh gosh, I didn't think of myself as a selfish person, but now that I look at these things, I'm selfish and I'm going to beat up on myself. And that's not what it's about. It's about looking at what are your behaviors on any given day and where do you see certain attributes come out. So often people have a really hard time assessing who they really are and what attributes really are predominant. If you want to be bold with it, you might even ask a couple of people what attributes they would use to describe you. And it's a really good idea to ask someone that you know will be honest with you or to ask someone who maybe doesn't really like you that will be willing to tell you the things that you might have overlooked within yourself. One of the things that you can think about as you're looking at the assessment for yourself is is to think about what attributes really drive you crazy in other people that you really don't like to see. 
because most likely if there are certain attributes that pop up a lot that really drive you crazy, there are going to be aspects of those attributes within yourself when you're really honest and you start looking at yourself. And once you start to do that assessment and you see, which this is that window just to look at it without judgment, to create that portrait, to see who you are in each of the different circles of types of people that you're with and see that portrait of who you are and see it as it is what it is. The facts are the facts. There's no judgment. But when you see that thing, then you can decide what are you going to want to do in the next year? Who do you want to be? How do you want to grow? What things do you want to improve? What things do you want to let go of? What would the portrait of who you want to be look like? If it was a perfect world and you could choose all of your attributes, maybe you want to write a paper about that too. And then as we soon come into the planning season, we're not quite there yet, then you'll be able to make a plan of how to get there, how to let go of those attributes you no longer want, how to bring in the attributes of mercy in the central column and the things that you want to add into yourself and then kind of move forward from there. As we go through this time where it is a little bit darker, we've got the challenging of the war planet of Mars and we've got the energy and the extra zest of the Gemini moon and we're going to be moving into, as I mentioned, the Capricorn. It's important to begin filling yourself with a lot of light because we're right now in that little in-between window where we should do that self-assessment and then we're going to want to start in a week or so really bringing in so much light into your vessel, really focusing on how much light you can bring in during a very, another very critical couple weeks of time because the light that you can bring in during that time is going to be an amount that if done properly can sustain you through the entire coming year. So it's important to do this self-assessment now and then figure out what ways do you use to bring light into yourself. There's a couple things that you can do that are pretty simple. Lighting candles in your home with the intention of having that light expand through your vessel and expand through your home will bring a very literal, beautiful uh, channel of spirit to come in and fill your space. You can also do a bonfire if you want to get with a, and have a really big fire. Have a beautiful big winter bonfire outside and think about what attributes you want to throw into the fire and let go of and what attributes you want to use the flames of the fire to help fuel you to bring the light into you through the new year. You can also uh, do things like meditation and just really seeing, visualizing that light coming into you, expanding your vessel, bringing in the light of Reiki is another wonderful way, of course, to expand the light within your vessel so that you'll be ready once we reach the state where you'll be planning. We'll be coming to that in such a short time. So really, I encourage you to take stock of who you are. Think about what you want to have, what you want to let go of, who are you really, and what you're going to be wanting to see in your life will be coming up soon. I hope that gives you some food for thought for this week, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, everyone.